Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. You've probably found this part of the channel because you've been watching the daily tarot videos. If you found it elsewhere, let me know in the comments, but I do think most people who find this channel find those first. Anyway, welcome to um, the series where I just kind of take a look at my own beliefs and what matters to me on my spiritual journey like what are the important things so today i wanted to talk about something that hits home very much and that is toxic families my question is why are some people born into toxic families and what can we do to overcome it when we are first i'd like to share a bit of my own personal story um, i do come from a toxic environment i love my family a lot let me first say that I'm a big fan of my mom and I care about my sisters a lot. I love them even though I may not necessarily talk to them that often. I do care about my family um, so I don't want to say anything that's going to sound like I am bashing them or I and I don't I especially don't want people you know to make comments about my family based on the things that I say today. But the family I come from isn't one that you know seems normal or stable there's a lot of instability in the the family that i was born into my mother is an addict um she's been an addict since before i was born so well over 30 years she's been a drug addict and an alcoholic my father i think was also an addict and an alcoholic but he passed away when i was five um, my sisters are all big drinkers they, um, I was a very big drinker for many years, um, more than 10 years for sure. I started drinking when I was like 14. So I've been a heavy drinker for a long time and only in like the last four or five years have I been really trying to, to slow down and like at this point in my life, two glasses of wine are probably good for me. Um, like I get tingly after that, so. I have stepped back from it. I've mentioned probably on this channel a number of times that I myself have dealt with mental illness, that I have been suicidal, that I have been um, in very emotionally dark places. And I, I'll get to that. I'll get to that in another video, my own mental darkness. Um, but I do think that a lot of my own issues came from the environment I was born into. And because of that environment, I have always kind of questioned my place in the world and I've always kind of questioned who I'm supposed to be and I've always wondered, you know, why was I born into this life? And I, I don't wonder that as a woe is me, more as I want to understand. Um, I'm very happy that I was born into the life that I was born into because I don't think I'd be who I am today otherwise. And I like who I am today. I think I've had I've had a lot of lessons in my life. I've had a lot to learn and to try to overcome and to grow through and I'm still learning a lot of lessons and I don't think I would have learned the same things had I been born in some other more beneficial situation. But I can't help but wonder why this is the life that I was born into, why I was born to addiction, why I was born to a family that that engages in a lot of violence, especially um, because I am not that kind of a person. I'm not a violent person. Um, I do have an addictive personality, but as far as like fights go, I think I was in one fight ever in my life, and it was really just because people kept telling me to do it, and I'm really, I've I've learned a lot over the years, but it was really easy to tell me to do something. I've always been really good at following instructions and following um, someone who's telling me what I need to do, or good at it, as in literally you tell me what to do, I process the information, and then I do it. Um, it doesn't mean I always listen when people tell me what to do, because I am who I am, and I have a real issue with authority. But yes, I come from a toxic environment, like I said, addiction, 
violence, abuse, sexual and physical and verbal abuses. Um, either I've experienced it or I've seen it. In fact, I can say I've experienced all of those things um, in some way throughout my life. And all of those things at some point came from either family members or um, someone that they married or was in a relationship with and brought into the family. And all of those years, I've just kind of tried to figure it out. I've come up with about three ideas for why people may be born into a toxic environment. The first idea is um, one that I've heard floating around in the spiritual community, and that is that we choose our life for whatever reason. So before you're born, before your spirit becomes connected with the physical, we are conscious of the world. We're conscious of our past lives and we're conscious of our possible future lives. And then we get to choose what future life we want to live. And because in some of these theories, time isn't necessarily linear, you know, we could have lived this life and then lived another life a hundred years from now and then also and then came back and decided to live a life in like ancient Egypt. Um, that's just a theory. I'm not sure all the details about that or how I feel about that entirely. That's something I still need to work through. Um, but the idea is that we do choose the, the life we want to live in, the family we want to be with, the circle of souls that we would like to interact with in our living, in our lifetime. And many people choose these harder lives because there's a lesson that they need to learn. So the idea is that in your past life, you did not learn the lesson that your soul needed to learn. And you get to choose whether you want to continue life with just, you know, not learning anything, you just want to live life, or if you want to go through an experience that is going to help your soul to grow and blossom and become what what it's meant to be, to fulfill your spiritual potential. And so many people believe that those of us who come into toxic environments do so because we're ready to move on to that next stage spiritually and we're ready to, to grow. And so our soul already knows, like, and I'll tell you, this this theory I'm not sure I'm against because as a kid, lots and lots of people would tell me that I had an old soul or that I didn't seem like I really belonged here or that I didn't seem like I fit into this family or fit into my environment. The, you know, the ghetto of Chicago, um, little town in Mississippi for like people didn't think I fit in people didn't treat me like I fit in a lot of people didn't like me for whatever reasons and I think a lot of that is because I I knew that this wasn't it for me that that life wasn't it for me I spit my tongue ow and so I came into this life already knowing that I was meant to, to overcome these obstacles and to heal through them. And so I didn't really understand why everyone else was just kind of okay with just settling for the lives that they were living. And yeah, I know that sounds very judgmental and it was, and sometimes it still is. I still question, you know, if your life is making you miserable, why are you choosing to continue that? And a lot of people will give you all kinds of excuses, but I'll tell you right now, I, when I think about what I came from, when I think about the experiences I've had, the homelessness, the addiction, the sexual abuse, the sexual assaults, when I think about all of these experiences, the, the lack of being able to feed myself, you know, um, losing out on many, many opportunities, not being able to do something as simple as join Girl Scouts or do any after school activities because all of the money in our family was going towards something else and not towards, you know, giving me and my sisters, me and my sister, the childhood that that could have helped us be a little bit more well-rounded. When I think about all of those things and where I am now, today, right now, I know that you can overcome. I know that I, it, it makes it harder for me to understand people who don't work towards changing their situation because especially in America, where we do have all of these opportunities, yes, there's a lot of things that, that we're still trying to get through and trying to fix, but we have so many opportunities to heal 
heal ourselves and to improve our, our life situation. And so I, I have a trouble understanding people who don't do that. But then I think about this theory and this idea that my soul already knew that it was ready to make these these changes to to go through this experience maybe theirs wasn't maybe theirs just thought this is what they deserved or maybe you know if we all choose our life maybe in their past life they thought you know i've i've done such and such so this is the life that i need to go into now to continue my journey and you know everyone has their own journey and some people like i said would just like to live without soul growth other people are going through their own journey of soul growth and it's gonna sh it's gonna look different from mine it's going to feel different from mine and i've learned to understand that Another theory is very similar, but it's less in our control. It's a karmic theory. So the idea of karma is basically that whatever you do in this life, um, your soul is basically colored. And so that in your next life, you're going to be dealing with your choices from this life. So whatever we did in our, our past life, whoever we were, there were lessons that we didn't learn or lessons that we chose not to accept. And so the divine is basically like, well, hey, you didn't learn at that time. Maybe you'll learn it in this lifetime. And so, you know, they, they, there's lots of theories about karma. Um, I do hear a lot of people wrongly assume it has to do with this life, but historically karma has never had to do with, you know, you pissed your coworker off yesterday and now you stubbed your toe. Like, that's not how that works. Karma is not something that's just going to, like, if someone ticks you off and you say, oh, karma will take care of them, maybe in their next lifetime. It's not going to happen this lifetime. That's not how that works. Um, there are other universal kind of ideas or laws for what it is that, that creates consequences in this lifetime, but karma is supposed to cross um, multiple lifetimes. So the theory is that whatever we did in our past life has brought us to where we are now and there's a lesson to be learned from this life and if we learn this lesson then our next life is going to be a lot more positive until eventually we reach a point of nirvana where we are enlightened where our soul has learned all the lessons it needs to learn and then we move on to the next plane of existence and of course the easiest theory is that this is just random that life is just a series of random crazy events and whatever happens happens and so you're born into the family you're born into because that's just what happened and it doesn't matter it doesn't make it doesn't mean anything unless you choose for it to mean any to mean something unless you know you decide to take those lessons and heal during this lifetime it's not going to mean anything um it doesn't mean have to do with your soul it doesn't have to do with the souls of the people around you. You just happen to be here at this time with this family, with these people in this environment, whatever it is. Basically shit happens. Well, I partially believe that anything can happen and that life for the most part can be very random. Not everything is synchronicity, not everything is a sign. Um, I do think that there is a higher intelligence. I do think that there is more than just existing, especially for, for living creatures, for humans, cats, dogs, living beings. Um, I think there is some being, I consider it God, I consider it the divine, I consider it um, you know, deity, and I'll, I'll use a lot of these terms interchangeably because I want people to understand um, what I mean in the language that works best for them, for you. So I will use a lot of these, but in my head, I generally will say goddess or um, the divine feminine, so, or mother, I use that a lot. But um, I think the mother, the, the divine feminine god, I think she exists and I think She's not just going to randomly throw us into this life. And I, I personally am more fond of the idea that either, or the two ideas, that it's either karma or it's a choice or, you know, both. You know, you're making this choice because of your karma in your last life. And you're saying, hey, I, I know what I did. So I need to learn this lesson for myself. I need to, and my soul needs to learn this lesson. Um, so I'm going to live this life. And I prefer that just because of my personal experiences. And that's not to like blame anybody for anything. But I do think that, that because I do feel like I have a very strong soulmate connection with my own mother. So I feel like 
I chose to be to follow her into this life and I chose to to learn the lessons that I'm learning through this life for whatever reason and I still don't know the reason um, I'm still learning and I hope to be con continuously learning and continuously figuring things out and not just for myself but for my family members um, to help kind of break cycles and help heal people who have had trouble healing especially in my family um, and to help free people of whatever it is that whatever it is that's created this dark cloud over my bloodline I want to help heal that and so I do feel like maybe some part of my spirit chose this not just for me but for for my bloodline for my family whatever the reason we are here whatever the reason we end up in toxic situations in unhealthy family situations i think it's important that we figure out how we're going to deal with it because regardless of why you're in this situation you're in it and if you want to get out of it you got to do something about it so how do we deal with toxic families or toxic environments when we're born into it? I can only speak from, I guess, my own experience. I mean, I've heard so many stories and so many people who have had these toxic families, especially. These, they, they grew up in these places and their only reprieve was to escape. And honestly, I kind of did that too. I came to New York where I have no family, where I knew pretty much no one. I, there was like one person here that I'd met once before I moved here. Um, and she and I became friends after I moved here. But before that, like I knew no one. I just came here and I, need, I knew I needed to get away from that environment that I was in. I was in Chicago and I swear I thought if I stayed another year in Chicago, I would die there. Like literally, I would either be killed or I would kill myself. And I just, I didn't want that, you know? I wanted to live and I needed to find some place where I could do that and feel free from certain, certain burdens, certain energy, certain negativity. And if that's something you need to do and are able to do, I honestly, I think it's good for you, you know? Moving to New York changed my life for the better. I am much healthier mentally and emotionally than I've ever been. I'm much more stable than I've ever been. I am fixing my financial issues. I have, guys, I have things on my credit report from when I was seven. Seven. I got apartment. I got apartments when I was seven. Wasn't me, but... These are things that I have to deal with and I'm starting to figure them out and I'm starting to actually face my student loans and face, you know, my just these things on my credit report that like, again, I was seven, I couldn't get an apartment in my own name, I couldn't get cable, I couldn't get a car, but someone did in my name and I'm not going to say who, but I know who and they are related to me. So, like, I'm learning these things, getting away moving to new york is the catalyst for me having learned these things and maybe not specifically new york like just moving i could have moved anywhere i could have gone to seattle i could have gone to la i could have gone to freaking iowa i don't know but like moving and figuring out how to be on my own figuring out how to be free figuring out what i want out of life who i want to be and who who i owe my loyalty and my my care to who i owe my time to figuring that out figuring out my boundaries was it, it all came from me being able to pull away from that environment so if that's something that you need to do i say do it i say if you're in a toxic environment and you're able to pull yourself away and you know even if you're not currently able make a plan if you make a plan, you set goals for yourself, then you will find a way to be able to get out of there, okay? It may not happen tomorrow, but if you really want to escape that situation, you will, okay? There's no there's no if about it. You, you have to stop making excuses for yourself. And I think that's another thing we can do to overcome our toxic environment is stop making excuses. We have to stop making excuses for ourselves. We have to stop making excuses for our family and for our friends, anyone who's been creating that toxic environment for you, okay? You have to stop saying, oh, they, they, this is just their way or this is just how they've always been or um, 
you know, they act like this because of their mom. Like, I get that. Yes, we all have issues from our parents. We all have issues from our ancestors um, that are passed down, especially, especially people who are minorities in the United States. We have a lot of issues that were passed down from our ancestors. But at some point, you have to take responsibility for yourself and you have to either make other people, like, let other people know that they need to take responsibility, that you're no longer taking responsibility for their behavior, or you have to pull yourself away so that they can see the consequences of their behavior. Whatever it is, like, you cannot keep making excuses for people because that is not going to help anybody. It's not going to help you. It's not going to help them. Another thing I learned early on when I was starting my pagan journey was meditation, and I wasn't very great at it for a long time. I had to really, really practice, and again, moving to New York helped me to solidify my practice, and before it was very, very spotty, very, very um, just whenever I feel like it, every couple of months, I'll try to meditate. And when I, even that little bit though, even that little bit of meditation, helped me to find some serenity for myself and afterwards like moving here and learning to meditate regularly and med I, med I meditate almost every day now at least for like two three minutes um they're very short meditations the ones i do every day and it's really just to ground myself and to get myself uh connected to myself to my body and so learning to meditate even that little bit that i did when i was a kid when i was younger really helps me to find a bit of calm within the storm. So, you know, those late nights when um, family members are getting drunk and then someone gets violent and then like the cops are called, I can like chill back in my room and just be like, you know, like I was very big on, what's the word, um, distraction. Was really big on distraction when I was younger and I don't think that's the answer I think that is a band-aid though and if you're in a situation where you can't get out distraction may be the only way to cope with it it's just once you're out of that situation you do have to learn not to let let that habit continue and that's something I had to learn because it was like I said huge on distraction I would meditate I would try to quiet myself I'd go in my room I'd blast my music I would stare at television and movies like I got way into movies I read all the time not just because I loved books but because reading kept me from having to face my home and face the people around me so um <sighs> You know, if you have to distract yourself before you can leave, then by all means, that is a coping me method. Just make sure that once you're free of that situation, you are able to let go of those habits because it will no longer be serving you and it will keep you from actually pursuing your purpose and pursuing your goals because you'll, you'll still be stuck trying to distract yourself from anything that gets even a little bit difficult. And I'm... I know from experience. So other ways to deal with a toxic environment. So we've mentioned um, getting away. That's like, I think the biggest thing for us is like to get away, get some perspective. Even if you don't, for, if you're not leaving forever, that environment, like I can't like just walk away from my family and never contact them again. And I am quite often being the one who they, they're annoyed by me. I annoy my family because quite often I do point out these things that I've mentioned here. I'm not, I, I don't want to sugarcoat things and I want to let people know because it gets, it gets scary. You know, I'm afraid, I'm afraid that I could lose my family members. I'm afraid that because of certain family members' choices, they could, I, I could get a call one day and they're just not there anymore. And like, I don't, I don't want that, you know? You don't want to lose anybody else. And I have lost some people. And I didn't really, I don't know. I don't think I understood loss until I was an adult and dealing with it. And when I was a kid, it just, it seemed like, you know, every other day somebody was dying. Maybe not a direct relative. Maybe my friend, my cousin's friend was like shot in Chicago. You know, like it was just a part of, existing and I think that was you know probably easier than now when I just am constantly afraid 
that I'm going to lose someone who's very, very important to me. I don't like thinking about that. I don't like thinking about losing the people that I love. Um, so I do, whenever I talk to them, you know, I, I give them my opinion. I give them my thoughts on, you know, where they might be heading and how, I've, how I'm afraid and like how they can maybe do better for themselves and improve their own situation and how, you know, and, and just in the last year or two, I've had to stop giving money to my family and that's been a point of contention that's been a very awkward thing for me and my family um especially you know my sibling siblings i have just stopped trying to give them money because it doesn't help them it just is a temporary appeasement I guess. I think that goes along with setting boundaries for ourselves. So what did I say? You gotta leave the situation if you can. If you can't, set boundaries for yourself or whether or not you can or can't. Set boundaries for yourself and plan to leave that situation. At the end of the day, you have to think about your safety. You have to think about your health and you can't be healthy if you're living in an environment where people are not. Um, and you know, this is my situation is very different from a lot of people's situations, but there are people out there who have uh, very abusive parents. I was very, I was quite lucky because my mother is super loving, despite any flaws that she may have, despite her addiction, despite um, possible um, borderline personality behaviors. My mother has always told us that she loves us. She's always treated us with love she's always told us to love ourselves no matter what whether or not anybody else loves us we have to know to love ourselves and so i'm very lucky to have that but there are people out there who have parents and they're teenagers and they can't leave because you know they're minors and their parents are always berating them and tearing them down and telling them how bad they are and how messed up they are. And then, you know, on the other side, there are parents who do nothing, who every time your kid makes a mistake, they, you know, you're just like, oh no, it's okay, you're cool. And like, you coddle them. And both sides are a form of abuse in my eyes. Both sides are harming the person that you're trying to raise and bring into being a good person. And no parent is perfect. Every parent tries. And you may have one or either of these um, aspects in your life. And I think it's important to not see one, one thing, like your mom is having a bad day um, and she says something mean as, full-on abuse because she's also a human being and people make mistakes people say things they don't need to say so it's really important to be aware of whether or not this is an ongoing pattern or whether this was an off day or an off month or a bad year you know um, and I think a bad year is pushing it there because eventually that kind of behavior will tear a person down within weeks within a month so um, if this is continuous if it's ongoing behavior your best bet is to get out of there and like I said if you can't get out right now make a plan set a goal an actionable step-by-step -step plan to get yourself safe another important way to deal with toxic environments is therapy um, I think if we are looking at ourselves and we're trying to understand ourselves we are going to have a lot easier time getting away from toxic people and understanding or recognizing when someone's behavior is dangerous or harmful to us and if you're not looking at yourself then there's a huge chance you're repeating this toxic behavior there's a huge chance that you are putting yourself into unhealthy situations and you're using um unhealthy coping methods so i do think that therapy or some method that allows you to take take yourself in to look at yourself and to look at your own mental behaviors, your own patterns, um, your own feelings about things, even the, the bad feelings, even the things that feel sad, you know, you have to look at that. You have to um, check in with yourself. If you don't check in with yourself, how the heck are you going to be able to understand when someone else has a problem or when someone else's problem is hurting you? You don't know if you're not if you're not checking in with yourself. And the last way to maybe deal with having a toxic family or being born into a toxic environment um, is once you're able to 
find some distance, whether that's, you know, just during your school days. Find people who aren't toxic. Find a circle of friends, of counselors, teachers, whatever. Find people that can help lift you up and bring you so that bring you to that place where you can see your own worth, where you can see how to heal yourself because it all starts with healing ourselves. And that's what I had to do, you know. I had a lot of teachers in my corner. I will forever and ever until the day I die fight for teachers because not only do they educate everybody, not only do they spend more time with kids than parents do, but they can save actual lives and they definitely saved mine. Having teachers who were on my side and telling me that, you know, I could be more, that I, I didn't have to follow the path that I was placed upon. Telling me that I could be a good person and that I could live a good life and that there were, there were more possibilities for me than what I'd seen. I really needed that. And I think that definitely saved my life more times than I can count. On top of teachers, I also had some really good friends. I didn't have a lot. A lot of people, like I said, did not like me when I was younger for whatever reason. There were people who literally told me they didn't like me because I was too quiet. What? Like, I, okay. Um, so like there were a lot of different reasons and a lot of people who did not like me and like just actively treated me like crap so having the, the two three four friends that i had in each of my schools i went to quite a few different schools having a few friends was, was you know it was great it was better than the alternative which would have been everybody hating me and then me wanting to hurt myself sooner than i did and sooner because i at 17 I, I made an attempt on myself and ended up in a psychiatric hospital for a few weeks and then ended up in outpatient for months until my insurance ran out and I could no longer afford to get the therapy that I needed. Um, so I was at that time, or for a couple years after that, I was still in and out of emergency crisis therapy because that was the only time I could get some help was when I was having a crisis. So. If I didn't have the friends that I had, even though it wasn't good, I think things would have been a lot worse. So having friends, having people in your corner, people who are there for you, is another way to deal with your toxic environment. So let's just kind of quickly recap what methods we've gone over. So, um, of course, escaping the environment if you can. If you can't, plan to escape and do so as soon as possible. Um, distracting yourself while you're in that environment so that you're not internalizing all the things that are going on. Um, giving yourself something to focus your energy on other than all the negativity that may be around you. Finding people who are in your corner, who support you, who love you, who want the best for you and who are there to help you. And checking in with yourself doing the shadow work so that you can understand your own mindset and understand those um, of the people around you so that you can be more equipped to not only help heal yourself, but if necessary, to help heal them or at least give them some sort of path so that they can heal themselves. Okay, um, I think that's all I said. If I missed something, let me know. As with the other videos, I just kind of have a bit of a of notes here, but I didn't actually plan out everything I was going to say. So if I missed one of the key points at that at the end, just let me know. Um, and thank you so much for being here. I do hope that this video was helpful for someone. I do hope that you know you guys can find a way out of your unpleasant situations, out of your toxic environments, because you deserve to be out. You deserve to be loved. You deserve to be free. You deserve to feel safe and joyful and content with your life and with who you are. Um, oh, another one I did say was setting boundaries. It's super important. Set boundaries for yourself to protect yourself, okay? Especially when you're surrounded by toxic people, especially when you're surrounded by people who want to take from you and drain you protect yourself okay that is the most important whatever reason we were born into these lives it is our jobs to heal ourselves and come through 
don't just settle don't accept that this is how it has to be and certainly don't tell yourself that you don't deserve better because you do all right thank you so much i'll see you next time and remember always that i love you bye